Beloved, greetings to you in the sovereign and mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for connecting with us on this Lord's Day. It is truly good to have you with us. It is the day of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This morning to all our members at Christ Kingdom Ministries, we truly love you, we appreciate you, and we're missing you. And we're missing our fellowship with all our families throughout the nation. Let us join together right now as we worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go to war right now. We're going to raise our hallelujah. Yeah. So many times the devil comes to play games. And today I told myself, I have no business with you. And I'm going to raise my hallelujah in your presence, enemy. In the presence of depression. In the presence of cancer. In the presence of every sickness and every disease. I will raise my hallelujah tonight. Come on, somebody praise him. Let's raise our hallelujah. Hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody Let's sing a little louder. 
with some of the most significant and vital instructions Jesus Christ has given during his final Passover upon the earth. Just before his crucifixion, he speaks to the people concerning the end times and he gives specific commandments to adhere to. Jesus Christ was about to face the greatest of trials and the greatest of temptations and testings. But there was something at that moment of time that was the decisive factor for his victory. It was the way of victory and triumph. Three times he gives this particular word to his disciples that was crucial for them at this time and crucial for us now. What is this command that is so significant? What is this command that was so vital, that was decisive and crucial for victory? The word is watch and pray. Firstly, the word watch appears three times in succeeding chapters of Matthew chapter 24, 25 and 26. Watch, watch, watch. One time is important. Three times is of supreme importance. It is of utmost importance. It means get it into your head. It means get it into your spirit. It means this command must be followed. It must be given due attention to reinforce this word and epoxy it in the people's heart. Jesus also declares it three times in Matthew 26. Watch, watch, watch. Even if you were sleeping the first time and you did not get the word, even if you're sleeping the second time and did not get the word, even if you are sleeping the third time you didn't get the word, even if you heard and you did not hear, you can't miss it. You can't miss out hearing it. Matthew 24, 42, Jesus declared, watch. Therefore, in Matthew 25, 13, he repeats, watch therefore. In Matthew 26, 41, he, he declares, watch and pray. Now to understand the word watch and the reason Jesus repeats it is that there is uh, an instruction that comes with a blessing. It is an instruction that comes with a blessing. In Revelation 16, 15, it is written, Blessed is he that watches. Blessed is he that watches. To be blessed means to be fully satisfied. It means to receive God's favor regardless of the circumstances. To be blessed means to receive and give inheritances, both spiritually and naturally. Wow. How many of you want to be blessed this morning? Then watch and pray. To watch is to be alert. It means to be on continuous guard. To pay careful attention to what God is saying. It means to be discerning of the times. This is especially important now because of the fiery trials that lay ahead. Jesus declared in Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. Why do you need to watch so you don't fall? So you don't fall into temptation and error and sin. So that you don't succumb to this temptation that is so rampant now. Temptation is testings of the coming danger and persecutions. For watch and pray for the trials we face might prove greater than we can bear. The Lord Jesus Christ did not want us, his people, to become casualties of these troubles. Yes, you will face temptation, but when you watch and pray, you will be victorious. When you watch and pray, you will be triumphant. When you triumphant, when you watch and pray, you will conquer. When he said the word watch and pray, the word pray here denotes that no one has the power to withstand uh, without God's help and intervention of the things that is to come upon the earth. This is a scripture that I started last week that will help you understand this scripture and how it fits with what you pray. 
In Matthew 24, verse 8, the NIV says, It is written, All these are the beginning of birth pains. The birth pains are the troubles coming upon the earth. The New Living Translation records, But all this is only the first of the birth pains. This is only the beginning of the end. The end is not here. No, no one knows when the end will be. But it will come. You need not to be fearful if you are prepared. It will not overtake you if you are prepared. For instance, for those of you who are married and your wife is pregnant, almost due to give birth, and suddenly you hear the word shout, Ah! The pains are now intense. The beginning of the birth pains has started. You drop everything that you are doing. Your wife is now priority. For some of you, it's the first time your wife is a priority. Just kidding. Your heart starts racing. The adrenaline is pumping. She's got your full attention. You get everything ready that she needs for what is to come. In the shortest time possible, you rush her to hospital. The waters break. There is no time for deliberation. There is no time for questioning. The bottom line is the baby is coming. You can't stop it. You can't change it. Don't know how long before the baby will be born. Whether it is one hour, whether it is 10 hours, whether it is the whole day. It does not matter. It is not the issue. You are now prepared. All is well. You have made the right choices. You have got the right gynecologist. You've booked in the right hospital. All your pre-approvals are secure. He's prepared. She's been in pre preparation for nine months. No need to stress now. You are prayed for this time. Now all you do is wait in faith. There is no fear. You are fully expected for what is to come. Likewise, beloved, we are called to watch and pray. There is a shout. The prophets have spoken. Who can but obey, prepare, and be alert? There is a shout upon the earth right now. Watch and pray. You need to drop everything that distracts your faith and service to Jesus Christ. Let go of what holds you down and get ready for what is to come. Make adjustments now. Give priority. Give full attention. The water is broken. The time is now. The prophets have spoken. The signs are manifest. There is no denial. The Apostle Luke brings further clarity to the word Jesus addressed to his people. In Luke 21, 36, Jesus declares, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that should come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. The word is clear. Watch and pray to escape. When your heart is open to the command of the Lord, your spirit is awakened to what is going around in the world. And what happens? You automatically respond with strong intercession and strong prayer. You begin to release over your church, over your life and your family and the nation, the blessing and the promises of the ever living God. There is a divine exchange that takes place when you begin to pray. In Revelations chapter 8, Verses 3 to 5, and another angel came and stood at the altar. I'm showing you what happens when you begin to pray. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it upon the earth. And there were voices of thunderings and lightnings and of earthquakes. Hallelujah. This is God's intervention in response to your prayers. It is unspeakable. When you begin to pray, 
And when you begin to pray, I want to tell you something happens. Something happens in the heavens. The angels collect your prayers and put it in, in the prayer bowl. And when that prayer bowl is full, it is took and it comes. The answers come with thunder and lightning and a fire. Beloved, the hour has come to fill your prayer bowls with prayer. Some of your angels that are holding your prayer bowls have probably got arthritis because there's no movement at all for prayers. Yet many of you, I want to tell you the angels' muscles are flicked because every moment you're sending prayers up. See a person whose life is full of prayer. God always takes him out of their troubles. God always breaks through for them. God always makes a way for them this day. And I say to you, when you are prayed up, you begin to seek God and you're declaring his word over your life. No disaster, no famine, no pandemic will overtake you. When you start to intercede, the heavens respond on your behalf. It is written, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And so I encourage you this day. When Jesus said, watch and pray, don't you think God knows what is good for us? Don't you think God is giving us the immunity to survive and overcome the things that is to hit them on this earth? Amen. It is written when you pray, you are counted worthy to escape. That is the word. Why Jesus wants you to pray? So you are counted worthy to escape. How do you think he triumphed at the Garden of Gethsemane when he began to pray? He was preparing for the darkest hour to come. And at that moment, in the midst of all the trials, nothing could hold him down. The glory of the prayer and what he declared over his life and over this people, he rose up victorious. He triumphed. Beloved, I say to you, watch and pray that you will triumph. Watch and pray that you will be victorious this day. A prayerless life will make you a casualty, will bring much sorrow to you. The bottom line is you cannot afford to be complacent. You cannot afford not to watch and pray. You cannot afford to be sleeping or to be silent. You cannot afford to ignore God's warnings. The days we are living life according uh, according to the flesh and having no time for God is over. Watch, pray, and escape. That is the word of the Lord. Or sleep, play, and pay. That's what will happen to us who don't obey. When Jesus told his disciples to watch and pray, they were naive of the overwhelming fire of discouragement and sorrow that awaited them. They choose to sleep in the most crucial moment. And beloved, I tell you what, if Jesus never come back after the resurrection, the disciples were in trouble. In fact, this church would have been in trouble. I say to you now, Jesus is not coming back to hold your hand. He's not coming back to speak to you directly. He has spoken. He has given us his word to help us. He's given us his word to reinforce us. All we need to do is when you pray, he hears from heaven and he responds. Beloved, if you don't pray and if you do not respond to what God is saying uh, through his instructions, you will be left alone in the end of times. If you try and face the future without him, you will fail. Beloved, if you can't draw close to him, the almighty God now, if you can't pray now, and if you are not alert now, when the dark days come upon you and it comes suddenly, it will be too late when you think you're going to pray, but then you will be overtaken by darkness and sorrow. How many of you today can really say you give quality time in prayer. The word of the Lord, beloved, is not to destroy you, to rebuke you in such a manner to break you, but the word of the Lord is come to bless you. And that is why like a, a father to a son and a father to the daughter will always try and bring correction. Why? Because they mean the best. They want the best for you. Jesus yearns to help us, but he cannot until we follow the rule. 
one of the greatest privileges given to the church is to call upon the name of Yahweh, the ever living God. Can you imagine through the prayer, you enter into the holy of holies by the blood of the Lamb this day. You enter into the presence of the living God. What a glorious opportunity and privilege that is. Can you really neglect it? There is no time for half-hearted devotion. It is all or nothing. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 6, it says, But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. You need to understand, beloved, the significance of this word. It is so simple, yet it is so profound. It says, for yourself, know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Suddenly it will come like a woman about to bring a child. That means you will not know the exact time. It will come unexpectedly. When you are asleep, it will come unexpectedly when you don't even know the right moment. Everyone knows about a thief. Everyone knows about his modus operandi, his method of operation. Now let us just say this day, you have a friend in the police force. Now he's from a special crime unit. Now he's a close friend of yours. This officer if there's ever a police officer that you will trust, is this guy. This guy has a reputation for honoring his word. And this friend of yours, this who has special intel received concerning your house. He has special intel that there is a thief that is going to come to your house and he is all planned and ready to take everything of value in your house and leave you with nothing. He already has special keys for your safe and whatever area you got things for your garage and all your cupboards. He is coming with others and he is going to clean you out. But he does not know the exact hour or which day he's coming, but he's definitely coming. What do you do? Do you ignore it? Do you ignore this special, this police officer? Or you act on this information? I think you will act immediately. You will make your house secure. The doors, the windows, and the gates will all be closed this day. You, if you got no burglar bars in your, in, on your windows and doors, you will make special arrangements to get it done. Why? Because for the fear that the thief is coming and he's going to steal everything. He's going to take away everything. And you don't even know if your life is safe. So you don't even get three coats or four coats. You just want the burglar bus installed. You will make sure that the alarm is working. You phone your insurance company also just in case to make sure you're covered. You don't sleep. Uh, you don't sleep at night. You keep awake all night. Why? Because you, your family's safety is, is at risk. Your life is at risk because you don't know what hour is coming. You get prayed. You get prepared, beloved. You, you get so prepared this day that you take the oil and you anoint your doors and windows. You anoint your gates, even the walls. You anoint and, and you, you never prayed before, but now you are binding and loosing. You speaking in tongues. You take the Bible out of the cupboard that was hidden so long and you put it on the lounge table so this thief is not going to come any anywhere near. You even take communion on your family so that you see that you protect it. 
Now, no thief is going to uh, catch you off guard. You are now ready and you are now prepared. You cannot be breached. Your house cannot be breached. Your inheritance is secure. Beloved, I got intel for you. The chief officer, the director general of all the armies of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said, let my people know the day of the Lord cometh like a thief in the night. Watch and be sober. Can you ignore the intel? No, I don't think so. Because it is coming from the highest order. Therefore, beloved, let us prepare likewise. Let us get ourselves ready. We got the intel. Don't let the enemy rob you of your inheritance. Rise up this day. Rise up and be prepared. Rise up and draw close to him. Rise up and begin to pray. Rise up and begin to turn your life towards him so that you will be blessed all the days of your life. Beloved, if you do not prepare now, there will be no escape. But if you watch and pray, no matter what comes, the Bible, the word of the Lord is you will escape. He will give you a way to escape. God has said watchmen over nations and over the church. They are the prophets. They are the priesthood. They are the spiritual watchmen. They watch, pray, and hear. They, they heard the word of the Lord concerning his people in times of pending trouble. And they shared that word whether it was the warning or whether it was direction or strategy concerning the situation. But they had to speak the word of God to the people. It was not their word. It was the word of the mouth of the Lord that had to be shared. In Ezekiel 3, 17, it is written, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. The watchman heard the word of the mouth of God. And they are to give the people warning from him. God's word, not their word. How many watchmen? How many of you are hearing from God? How many of you are giving the word that God wants the people to hear? And not what we want the people to hear. Ezra 1, 1 says that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. I declare that again. That the word of the Lord. By the mouth of Jeremiah. Might be fulfilled. God will fulfill his word. That comes out of our mouth. What is coming out of our mouths. Is it the word of the Lord. Or is it our words. The church is suffering loss beloved. Due to the word of the flesh. Being preached. The watchmen need to hear accurately what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church and to the nation and to the nations of the world and deliver his word without compromise. Beloved, as a watchman, we have a responsibility to speak truth. Otherwise, the blood of the people will be in our hands. Watchman, God is counting on you. Jesus is counting on you to deliver his message. You are his voice upon the earth. I know you won't let him down. I pray you won't let him down. Another word for watch is be awake. But be awake to what? You need to hear this first to get a better understanding of this word. Nations have fallen into spiritual and moral decay. There are great abominations upon the earth like the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sexual immorality is at its highest. Adultery, fornication, divorce is now normal and acceptable. Child pornography, children abducted for sex trade and child labor. Abortions are at its highest. Murders, rapes, violence uh, and thefts are now out of control. Lesbianism, homosexuality is now a fashion. These are just some of the wickedness 
of the plague that is upon the earth right now. In the midst of this, Jesus says in this hour, watch, be awake, be awake to what? 1 Corinthians 15.34 helps us to understand this. It says, awake to righteousness and not sin. This is one of the words for the end times. Awake to righteousness. Righteousness means holy and upright living. Living a life acceptable to God. Righteousness is one of the most important ingredient, ingredients for success and blessings. Proverbs 14.34, it is written, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Nations need to repent. It needs to come back to the fear of God. Righteousness only exalts a nation. Sin brings God's wrath and judgment upon the nation. In Matthew 5, 6, Jesus declared, and this is the word of the fourth beatitude. He said, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. It is written, the fruit of righteousness is the tree of life. Matthew 5, 7, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Wow. All I can hear now is for the righteous, blessing, 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 blessing. Amen. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Watch and pray. Jesus is seeking you to be awakened to righteousness. How many of you want all things to come to you? How many? I'm talking about the good things and the blessed things. The Bible says then seek righteousness. It says when you seek righteousness, all things shall be added unto you. Beloved, repent and be cleansed. Though your sins will be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Jesus' blood truly sanctifies and he makes us righteous. Jesus has a way out for you and I. He is not there to drop us and leave us. Beloved, but the key is taking while you can. In Luke 1, 74 and 75, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of the enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. It is a time for spiritual awakening. It is a time to watch and pray so you don't fall. It is a time to prepare for our escape. Prayers bring in answers. Watchmen speak the words from his mouth. Awaken to righteousness and be blessed and receive all things. Every one of you are watchmen, either over your life or your family, over the church or church departments, and over the community and the nation. You are watchmen. So take responsibility. Watch and pray and prepare. Act now. Don't ignore what the voice of God the alarm has sounded. Don't ignore his voice. And don't ignore the signs. Watch and pray and you will escape. He says watch and pray and you will not fall. Watch and pray and you will be accounted worthy. Watch and pray and you will be blessed. When Jesus said to his people watch and pray. It means he already prepared a way out. Otherwise, you would have never given us a word. Watch and pray. So I say to you today, don't fear. Don't be cast down. Jesus got your back. You shall escape these things to come. Just obey. Just watch and pray. Beloved, the word of God this morning is not to bring this rebuke, but to prepare the greatest blessing that is awaiting for you and I. When the economy goes down, you will be, you will have in abundance. When disaster comes, you will be protected. When the trials come, you will have peace. Uh, your joy will be full. You will be blessed to be a blessing. You will be encouraged to be an encourager of the brethren and give hope to others. In the face of it all, you will be called the blessed 
of the Lord because the righteous will be called the blessed of the Lord and you will have the blessings to show it. Jesus wants us to live in the resurrected power of blessings. You shall be overcomers. You will triumph over the days to come. Can you miss such a glorious blessing? I pray not. Today I say to you in conclusion again, watch and pray and you will escape and you will be blessed and you will have an open heaven and you will have the favor of the living God. Let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, this day I come to you in the sovereign and mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus, my King, my Lord and my Savior, you gave us this word in the most crucial time you ever faced. You gave it to the people and to your disciples. Watch and pray that we might escape. And so I thank you this day, in these last days, my Lord, help every servant of God, every son and daughter of the living God to hearken unto the voice of the Lord. You have given it to us because you desired us to prosper. Because your word says, blessed is he that watches. Today, I pray there will be a turnaround of the lives of the people. I pray today in the name of Jesus, people will return from their backsliding. They will rise out of their sin. They will rise out of all their bondages and they will turn to you that the days that lie ahead, they will enjoy the full blessing of the ever living God and there will not be a casualty upon the earth. I give you glory. I give you honor in Jesus' mighty name. Beloved, if there's any one of you today that has never declared Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I want to say to you today in him, there is hope. There is no salvation outside him. He is the resurrection and life. It is written, he that believeth in him Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall never die. I pray that you will never die. This day, if you want to dedicate your heart to Jesus, you want to come back from the areas of your sin, the blood is there. His arms are wide open. No matter how far you've gone, he says, come to me. All ye that labor and heavily laden, and I shall give you rest. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, I have heard your word this day. And this day, my faith has been encouraged. Today, I declare willfully that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is my Lord and my God. I believe he was born. I believe he died. And I believe on the third day, he rose again. This morning, I repent of my sins. I renounce every prayer of the past. And today, I commit myself fully unto So good morning, family and friends. And Welcome again to Christ Kingdom Ministries. Such an honor and a pleasure to share a word this morning. In this time that this country is going through in the pandemic of COVID-19, we can see clearly that the country and its people and us as a church have two issues. One is a health issue and health concern and also the economic and a financial issue. But I want to bring to you this morning a word I felt strongly in my heart to share with you. And when we look at the word in Genesis chapter 2, picking up from verse 15, then the Lord God took the man, and that's talking about Adam, and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And as you know, God created man, God created Adam in his own image, in his own likeness to have dominion. And it goes on in verse 16 and says, 
And the Lord God commanded the man or Adam saying, of every tree of the garden you may eat freely. And in verse 17 it says that, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it you shall surely die. Let me repeat the scripture. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it you surely shall die. And that's a reminder for us. Because the Lord God is talking to Adam about not eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What is he talking about? The tree. In this context, in our context, he's talking about the tide. The tree of knowledge represents your tide. And the Lord God is saying, do not eat your tithe. And when we look at the word in Malachi chapter 3, picking up on verse 7, the second part, he says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return to you? And as you know, that the glory and the blessing was lost when Adam ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But in Malachi, it says, return to me. Return to me. And I want to pick up in verse 10 where it says that, how does one return to the Lord? One of the ways is to seek Him in prayer, in the Word, in spending time with Him, in entering into His holy place. But also the other area of returning to Him, He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. And friends and family, that storehouse represents your local church. Why? Because it says that, that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it amen and in this time of stress that people are faced particularly Financially, the Lord is saying to us, return to me. Bring your tithes to the storehouse. Because church and people, please understand that when you bring your tithes and your offering to the storehouse, you take care of the ministers and the pastors. But not only that, we call to be a blessing to our communities. And I know many churches are involved in distributing food to those that are in desperate need. And so we encourage you to give and to bring your tithe into the storehouse so that we can be effective in the community. We can be a blessing to our people, we can be a blessing to the community that is really less fortunate. And so, I want to also encourage you by your giving in Genesis chapter 26. In verse 1, he says, There was a famine in the land, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord said to him, do not go down to Egypt, but live there. And Isaac was obedient and lived in and dwelt in Gerah. But in verse 12, he says, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. 
And the man began to prosper and continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. Friends and family, we are in this world but not of this world. We do not operate in the economy of this world, the economy of this country. We work and operate in the kingdom of God. We operate in the kingdom which is sowing and reaping. That's the kingdom we're operating. And when you sow in the time of famine, in the sow in the time when there's a great need and there's great constraints in the financial realm, that's the time to sow like Isaac. I'm believing God. And I'm, I'm, I've set my heart to continue to give my full time, to give offerings, to bless the poor. Because I believe the word of God, that if he can do it for Isaac, and we are a descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if he can do it for Isaac, he can do it for you and I. That as we sow, as we bring our tithes and sow our tithes and our offerings, we shall reap a hundredfold. We shall reap a hundredfold. That's what the word says. I believe the word. And his word says that he watches over his word to perform it. And it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which he has said. Not urgently in my heart to leave with you this day. Do not withhold your tithe at this time. Do not withhold your offering. Because the Lord always remembers your offerings according to the word. And so church, I just want to pray with you in this time. And believe and stand in faith with you. That God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think or imagine. That the blessing of the Lord make it rich and he adds no sorrow. And he said in his word that the righteous will not be forsaken, neither will he go begging for bread. So Father God, we thank you. We pray for your people right now, Father God. And we thank you this day that you promised, oh God, this day. That we need to come and return to you. And this day we come and return our hearts to you. Because we love you. And we come and bring our tithes and offerings to you, to the storehouse. And you promised us that you open the windows of heaven, that there won't be room enough to contain it. And we believe we receive our harvest. We believe that the windows of heaven are open this day. And we believe that blessing of the Lord comes upon you and I, comes upon our families. That we won't have room enough to contain it. And like Isaac sold, Father God, we thank you in this season, in this time, in this year 2020, we shall reap a hundredfold. Because that's what your word says. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the supernatural breakthrough in the, in the finances of your people, O oh God. We shall lack no good thing, O oh God, this day. And Lord, I thank you that you call us to be the head and not the tail. You've called us to be from above and not from beneath, oh God, this day. And we thank you for the blessing of the Lord that has come upon us this day. The blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that has come upon us today as your people this day. And we thank you, Lord. We give you praise and we give you honor this day in Jesus' name. Friends and family, the banking details of the church will pop up in the screen in a minute or so. We encourage you to sow. God bless you. Amen.